What's up guys, this is James White with Freak Interviews, bringing you As Seen on TV product reviews, gadget reviews, and more. Now if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing for more videos like this. Now today I've got the Power Air Fryer Oven 360. Back in 2017 I did the Power Air Fryer Oven. This is the latest version. It's a bigger model that has more features, but does it really work? Let's find out in today's review. This thing is so big, I gotta unbox it on the floor. There it is. Okay. Look at the size of this thing. It's huge. Quick start guide. Arbitration agreement. Owner's manual. Well, it's time to uh, start reading up on this and get started. All right, it's all unpacked now. The quick start guide says to wash it with warm soapy water, but only select accessories or dishwasher safe. So I'm gonna wash this up, plug it in, read up the manual, and then get started with my first test. Take a look at the contents. We've got the classic drip tray. This is the baking pan, not very large, and a crisper tray. What I'm gonna do now is start off my first test with something very simple. How about some toast? And I'm going to select toast. Here's all the choice, and you can select the darkness here. I think I'm gonna have it on the darker side. And the number of slices would be right here, two slices. And there we go. It looks like it's gonna take four minutes and five seconds. By the way, over here, there's some indications of where you should put the rack, depending on what you're making. So I selected the second rack for the toast option. Okay, looks like it's almost done. By the way, I had to put the drip tray in there as soon as I started because I forgot to put that in there. The instructions say to never use it without the drip tray. But let's take a look. It's almost done and see how it looks. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's toasted. It is toasted bread. Huh, I just made a mess. For some reason, I thought it wasn't gonna work so well, but that actually did pretty, I'd probably go darker next time, but it's toasted. Four minutes, not too shabby. All right, let's up our game a little bit here with some steak. Now, I don't have a recipe guide, so I'm completely having a wing this here. I've got this 400 degrees, which is as high as it goes in five minutes. I'll flip it and see how it looks. So right now, it is preheating. So once it's done preheating, I'll put my steak in there and we'll get started. I will say, I looked at the commercial and they were using this rack on the commercial when they showed the steaks, so that's what I'm gonna use. It would be nice to have a recipe guide, which I chose in the commercial, but when you buy it from Bed Bath & Beyond, there is no recipe guide, so you're kinda on your own. Oh, it's right at the top there, isn't it? And we're off. I'm gonna go five minutes and then flip it. All right, let's see what happens. Um, okay, okay. Well, I'm not too, I'm not too optimistic after seeing that first side after five minutes, but we'll see. Okay, well, the handle's not too, not too hot. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not done. For those of you who tell them, who are gonna say, well, you couldn't, shouldn't keep open in the oven, I don't have times on this. I have no idea how long to make it in here, so I'm doing a test steak, and guess what? I've got another one I'm gonna do after this, now that I got the times right. Ha! All right, I'm convinced this is the last time. I'm convinced, I'm sure of it. All right, there we go, perfect. All right, we're good. We are good, we want 140 for medium. There we go, perfect. I'm gonna let that rest now, and then I'm gonna put on my other steak, which is my non-tester steak. Out with the old. And in with the new, this one's going in for a little bit longer. I'm gonna put it in for 10 minutes for each side because this went in for over 20 minutes here, but I kept opening the door, so that was probably part of it. I'm gonna go 10 minutes each side and that should be about right. And there's the mess I gotta clean later too. Ugh. All right, steak number two. And this time, no messing around, we're gonna do it right. We're going 10 minutes each side. It seems long, but I think because it only goes to 400, that might be why it needs more time. We'll see how it turns out when this is done. All right, steak number one has been resting. I'm gonna cut this open and see how it looks. All right, there's steak number one cut open. I think it was pretty good. It was a little over 20 minutes. All right, it's been 10 minutes. That looks a little bit better than last time. 10 more minutes. 
It's already set to my previous setting, so I just hit start again. And we're off. All right, here we go, here we go. This, I'm confident. It's been 20 minutes, 10 on each side. I think we're good, 20 minutes. Let this rest and try it out. Well, I gotta clean this off, I gotta clean that off when it cools just a little bit, so I got a little bit of work ahead of me. This was 20 minutes, 10 on each side, side in the broil mode, where the first steak I had to kind of put in several times. Let's take a look a little more closely here. What do you guys think? Pretty good? Not so good? You tell me. I think it looks pretty good. Well, that, that concludes my steak test, and now I'm on to something else. I'm on to cleaning that. Ugh. All right, the frequently asked questions on the Power Air Fryer 360 website says it includes a pro-grade dehydrator, so I wanna try that out. Now here's the thing, the commercial shows three trays, three crisping trays used to dehydrate. You don't get three crisping trays out of the box unless you wanna buy extras, so the other recipe I saw on the website included the crisping tray and the rack, so that's what I'm gonna to do to do some dehydrated bananas. So let's get started with that right now. So I've got couple of bananas that are cut up and I use the juice from pineapples instead of lemon juice which is a good alternative. I'm gonna try some pineapples too. I'm assuming they're gonna be different times but I'm gonna use the same setting and rotate the trays and see how long each one of them take, how long they both turn out. So uh, move over to the power air fryer and see how they go. Well that's that's what gonna go for now. I will rotate them a little bit later as I watch them but let's, uh, let's set this up. Dehydrated defaults to six hours, 120 degrees. I'll try that and see how it looks after six hours. Boom. And we're off. All right, these are, are done now. I got the banana chips, came out pretty nice. And even my pineapple, not too bad. What do you guys think? Pretty good. Uh, I think it ran a total of about 11 hours. I had to rotate them. I adjust the temperature a little bit, but I did get it to work right the first time. So I'm pretty happy with it. I think it actually worked pretty well. I would have liked to have had a couple more of these trays, which I think you can buy separately. But otherwise, I made it work, and I think that I have nothing really bad to say about it. What do you guys think? Not too bad, huh? Let's try a little taste test here. Hmm, pineapple can really good. This is the food dehydrator I usually use. And look at the size of this thing. It looks like a high-rise building or something. And I don't even usually fill this thing all the way up, so having something ginormous like this is fine when you dehydrate a lot, but for someone like me who just dehydrates a small amount, this actually is a better option. It's one less appliance I have to have, and it only makes a small amount without having to lug out this giant 20-story building. So I think it's actually a pretty good option for those of you who are kind of occasional dehydrators and they're not doing large amounts of food, this will work pretty well. But this is actually pretty good. All right, next up, let's try something a little bit more difficult. Let's try a rotisserie chicken. Now, the original power air fryer oven also has a rotisserie function, but it's a pretty small oven. Didn't really hold larger objects. Let me show you. Putting these side by side, you can see the two of them together. I could barely fit a Cornish game hen in there. The power air fryer is 360, much larger, much larger. I think the capacity is a four pound chicken, so I got a four pound chicken to try the rotisserie right now. Let's do it. And also, I found a recipe guide on the TriStar website, which I will link below to show you where it's at, and it has rotisserie chicken recipe in it. So I'm gonna follow these instructions and hopefully it comes out perfectly. This is for a four pound chicken, which is what I've got. Okay, there it goes, it fits in there. That's a four, just over four pound chicken. So let me see what we got here for select. We're gonna go to the rotisserie. Rotisserie. The instructions say to put it for 350 for 45 minutes. Easy enough. And that's all there is to it. Beautiful, look at that. We have rotisserie chicken in the works. Obviously this, this chicken would not fit in the original, so certainly an improvement as far as size goes. I've got smoke filling my kitchen. Oh, smoke. All right, well the smoke dissipated. I don't, there was an initial burst of smoke that came out of there and it kind of went away. I guess it was maybe the juice going on the heating element, I'm not sure. So far, everything I've thrown at the Power Air Fryer Oven 360 has done pretty well. And uh, if you can see the size difference, 
I think there are some advantages of having a bigger oven. It seems like it's a little more versatile than this one. And the size, the capacity gives you greater flexibility for things you can put in there. Although I will say for dehydrating, there was three shelves in the power air fryer oven, which actually I think makes you, allows you to make more in this one than that one right out of the box. But you can get more shelves for a separate cost for this one. I think the biggest problem people are gonna have with this, unless something terribly goes wrong between now and the rest of my tests, which I have a feeling it's not going to because it's working pretty well. I think the biggest problem for most people are gonna be counter space because this thing's huge. It's like a, the size of a large toaster oven or even a small microwave. And not everybody wants to invest that much counter space with something like this. However, if you're using it for a lot of the features, if you're using it often, it might be worth it. It's been for about 15 minutes. Look at all the smoke coming off of here. Can you see the smoke? It is definitely smoking. Not too bad, but not too good either. Here we go. Let me check the temperature of this bad boy. All right, we're right about 165. I think it is done. Let's pull this thing out. There we go, about 45 minutes. Can let this rest for about 10 minutes. Let's see what the mess is. Eh, not too bad. I can, that's pretty easy to clean off, I think. Um, I will definitely clean that when it cools off. But I think it came out pretty good. Like I said, the old one wouldn't have been able to handle something this big. All right, let's cut this open and see how it looks inside. There it is, looks perfectly cooked. What do you guys think? Let's see. All right, that was exactly what I hoped for. It was perfectly cooked. I think that the rotisserie chicken came out really nice. So, so far the Power Air Fryer Oven 360 is doing a pretty good job. We got more tests to do, so let's see what's next. One of my most requested food items whenever I do a cooking product is fried chicken. So I've just prepared these with a seasoned mix I'm gonna put them in there now. I've got two recipes. One with the seasons mix, it says 400 degrees and 50 minutes. There's also a recipe for the power air fryer oven that says 375 for 40 minutes. I'm gonna err on the side of caution and go with the longer time. So I'm gonna use the recipe from the back of this box. All right, perfect. I got six pieces on there, very nice. All right, there we go, 450 minutes. Boom. And now we wait. It looked like it was getting done, so I stopped it early. Let me pull it out there and see what happens there. Well, it looks pretty good. It smells pretty good. Let me take the temperature and see how it, how it cooked. Oh yeah, 166, we are good to go. All right, this is how it looks. I think it came out pretty nicely. It seems well cooked. Time for the taste test. In case you're wondering, it is thoroughly cooked. Came out nice. I think the fried chicken was a success. All right, so for my final test, I'm gonna do the slow cook feature now. The slow cook feature requires you to use a small Dutch oven that will fit in there, and that could be a problem for some people when you can just go out and buy a cheap crock pot for 20 bucks. I do have this small Dutch oven, which is gonna fit in there, I measured it out. I think I had to keep the dimensions under 12 by 12 by six. I really didn't want to have to buy another item to use with this, but to make it work, I had to do that. So if you have something small that'll fit in there, then you should be able to use a feature. If not, then you may not be able to use this slow cook feature. But now that I have this, let's put some pork in there, make some pulled pork and see how it goes. And this should just fit. Yes, it does. It just fits. There we go. I'm not really sure what the slow roaster setting should be. I'm, maybe I should just try it with the default and see how it turns out. After four hours, I can check it and see how it looks. All right, it's been about four and a half hours. Let's see what we got here. I would say that after five hours, the pulled pork came out perfect. Came out nicely. Again, oh, Billy smells that. Oh, sorry, Billy, you can't have any. Again, though, you need a, a separate device to put in there to cook it in there, but if you have one that fits, obviously it works. All right, so in the end, I really have nothing bad to say about the Power Air Fryer Oven 360 other than the cost 
and the size. It runs about 200 bucks and it's a pretty large appliance. But as far as functionality goes, I have no complaints. It seemed to work pretty much as advertised and I had nothing really go wrong in my test of it. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a good product. Have you used the Power Air Fryer Oven 360 or the original? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Please follow my social profiles for progress pictures, videos as I go. And please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, with Freakin' Reviews.